I think a takeaway in terms of watching a documentary film is to be able to experience a world that you just don't have access to. You know, I'm making films that are primarily between between seven and 15 minutes long. Um, and my recent pieces have focused on single characters, so I want to tell their story and represent what they're doing, whether it's uh, someone who's an iron caster or someone who's a cheese maker um, or someone who's a, a cyclist and help people kind of understand what goes into their crafts and also think about ways in which the audience could identify with those people. And, and it's difficult sometimes because you want to ethically represent those people, no doubt about it, but you also want to, to bring a story that's going to that's gonna be captivating, that's going to hit people uh, both in their heart and their soul and, and uh, impact them in, in some way. Iron is, uh, if you think of it on a, a cosmic level and, and, uh, and a human level, iron is the core of the earth. Iron is, you know, what this is, is at the core of what we are standing on. It's what made this place. It's in a lot of our world and everything we do, you know. We cook with iron, you know, and, and it's in our blood. It's, it's, it's a major source of what, who we are and what we do in our DNA. And, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool to think of, you know, that it's that important to our, our life and where we are. I had a sensibility with 3D that not a lot of people did because of my background growing up on the farm. I already knew how to use all the tools. I knew how to build things. I, conceptually, I knew how things should go together and aesthetically how they should look. Um, so those kind of things came in handy and I just naturally did it. And it just, it just felt natural and easy in that. So um, that's when I, my, my professors were like, you know, you're a good photographer, but you could be a great sculptor. And, uh, and that's where I kind of found my my core group of people that I clicked more with. Hardworking, just really tough people that uh, had the same ideas I did, and so that was kind of my new home. My mom was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, and uh, it was the right time for me to move back home. All the work I was doing was building my house and working for these other companies, um, you know, honing my skills. And, uh, but when I moved back to the farm, one of my goals was like, I'm gonna be back here, I can make art. I can start making art again, finally, after being away for so long. The, the second year that we had down on the farm, my mom passed away five days before the poor. Everybody was calling up, you know, they'd heard about it right away, because within my iron circle, we're a, such a close-knit family. I found a family in art. Um, that just really is incredible. I mean, they have the same um, kind of work ethic, the same kind of ideas that I have about what I'm doing. Um, and uh, they're very giving. Uh, they're not like, a lot, a lot of the other art forms end up being very like, um, this is my idea, I don't want anybody else to know about it because you know, it, somebody might take it and make their own thing out of it. The iron community is just like, if, they, if, if somebody figured something out, they tell everybody about it because they want it to help perpetuate the knowledge and, uh, and, and to help everybody else get to that level faster. And maybe we can take uh, the art world, you know, the iron art world to another level. The more that we do this, the more that we, uh, you know, show each other our own techniques. If you hold on to this knowledge and you go to it with your grave, you're, you're not helping out the rest of the world. You need to keep passing this on. Iron just has this thing with it that is, I think just because you, you, you're basically casting iron the same way they've done it for a couple thousand years and it feels when you're doing it very primal and very, very raw and that work ethic, that, that uh, has just always been a part of me and then and part of my work too is just like getting in there and you know, and I don't, you know, getting dirty is nothing, you know, that just shows you did something. So you kind of almost got like a, um, 
a bee's nest kind of like thing where everybody got all these little workers that are breaking iron and then you got these other workers that are putting together other things breaking up uh, the fuel source and you got other workers that are uh, making food for the whole crew you know which that's a big part of it too because you got to keep everybody fed to keep working in that and uh, so you got all these little different groups that are all doing their own little things and then a group putting the furnace together and making sure everything's ready for that and uh, it's all these different groups that are working together for a common good which is the end end all is the night where we actually cast iron and melt the metal. You got a specific crew that's on the furnace keeping the furnace happy and then you got crew that's around that that is uh, carrying the pots of metal and pouring the metal out. So you have all these different little groups that are all symbiotic working together for a common good. You think of iron as such a hard durable substance and we're, here we are turning it into looking like water. I mean that's an incredible thing. I mean when this furnace gets going um, it's it's definitely you know it's, a, it's 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 an entity that's in there like cooking and you know and I'm just trying to like be a part of that uh, furnace when it's doing that and 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 understand it and be in a way that uh, isn't uh, harmful to it and that allows it to do what it wants to do which is just make metal I mean once it gets going all it wants to do is cast molten metal and uh, that's the that's the energy that it wants and uh, I always try to whenever I'm um, working on the furnace I'm trying to you know when I'm ramming the bottom and I'm getting everything prepped and ready for it and lighting the furnace I always want to be there as a part of that because I feel like uh, I carry some of that energy of the furnace with me wherever I go um, and that I'm trying to give that energy back into the furnace when I'm lighting the furnace um, but then at the very end of the furnace I'm you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm holding space for that energy to come back to me. So when we take the furnace and we drop the bottom on the furnace um, and, you know, let all, release all that energy back out and it goes back to the earth for the most part, um, some of that energy I'm taking back with me to take to the next furnace. Um, it's kind of that, uh, kind of like uh, the mother in kabucha or whatever, you know, I'm like I'm holding on to this stuff that I can actually take on to the next furnace or friendship bread or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's like this same kind of mentality, but uh, my friends kind of laugh at me and they think it's funny, but uh, that's just how I see it. Iron casting means to me, oh man, it's, 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 a, it's an evolution, I guess, for me. It's like, it's just like uh, being able to take something from an, you know, nothingness and create something that then, then you have to like, I don't know, just like making it into this new found, piece you know I don't know it's just like you're, you're creating something you're birthing something every time you're doing the, the metal casting the same thing with the furnace too I mean you're building this furnace that you're gonna um, you know feed it and you know you're kind of like it's a child almost you know and you're hoping it grows up to be something great and you know with this you're helping it you're hoping that the you know it's gonna give you lots of metal that then can give you lots of offspring of like lovely castings you know it's this incredible I don't know it's a it's a life cycle you know, it's just each one of these castings and every time we do an iron pour, it's just this beautiful, um, you know, small little cosmos or whatever of, of, of life or a little, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other ways of describing it. It's, a it's tough for me because it's, 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 it's such a big part of my world and my life right now and what I do and, and, uh, and the family and it's the camaraderie. It's that same thing. It's that family, that large group family that I have access to now that's just in, you know, that have been brought into my life because of iron. I'd lot, none of these people I would have known without iron. Um, and there's just some of my best friends are, you know, because of that. Um, lots of them. <laughs> it's amazing how many people. But um, I'm trying to think about, you know, iron. I don't know. It's, it's, for me, it's life. And that's, that's kind of the best way for me. It's, it's, it's my, life, my life, my lifestyle, I guess, and how I live it um, is very much iron.
right now it's been screened at 13 total film festivals. So coming up, we have the Beloit International Film Festival in Beloit, Wisconsin. Uh, overseas, in October, uh, we were in London, England at the Let's All Be Free Film Festival. I was there, part of that. It's a great film festival. They did a wonderful job. Um, also, as part of the Liverpool Liftoff Film Festival in Liverpool, England. So a little bit of, little bit of reach in the UK. Uh, there's a few other European countries we're trying to get into, but haven't heard on those works yet. So, yeah. I think you know you've produced a quality piece of video or film if... If when you finish it, you feel like a bit of an emotional attachment to it, and you feel like you're saying something that, that's going to have meaning for, for audiences. And, you know, we'd like to think that whatever we produce is going to create some sort of social change or it's going to impact someone in, uh, in an incredibly profound way. And it's not always going to be that way. Um, but if you can see the beauty in it and see that it, it does have value, then I think you produce good film.